So I've got myself some well-conditioned clay here, just making sure it's all nice and soft. Um, I've got my extruder and I just showed you there the cap. Um, I've chosen to use the little square um, disc on the end um, just because I really like the way that the shape comes out. Um, so yeah, just popping the clay into the extruder, just make sure the handle's wound all the way back. I'm just going to fill it up, um, give it a little squish down to try and stop the gaps. Push it in there. And then just putting the cap on of the extruder, make sure it's nice and tight. And then just start winding. And if you've ever used one of these extruders before, you'll feel it tension up. And then that's when the clay starts coming out the end. And yeah, so I chose this cap because it's a square and that means that as the clay comes out, it's nice, got nice flat pieces on the sides, um, which it just means it's easier to layer up when we get to the next stage. And then as you see the clay coming out, you can see that it slowly starts to change colour. That's where those colours are pushing into each other and forming the nice little pattern. There's a bit of a crack in the clay there. It doesn't matter. It's going to get mushed in all together afterwards. Now this technique was a little bit of a happy accident for me. Um, I was trying to do something different um, and that didn't work. So I had to play around and sort of came up with this technique. I've since found out that it is an actual technique and it has an actual name. Um, but yeah, so I needed to do some more here just to make sure that I had enough to make a decent sized um, cane. And yeah, just going to reposition all these, stack them on top of each other, making sure that the colours are slightly different that are next to each other. And then once you're happy with how it's sitting, I'm just going to um, squish it all together just to close up those gaps. I just like to use my ruler. It's a clear one so I can see what's happening underneath. It's just applying a bit of pressure and then turning. And this will squish down all the sides and hopefully remove all the little gaps. Now sometimes if you find that it's warmer weather or your clay is quite soft, it can help to sometimes pop it in the freezer for a few moments just to harden it back up. Um, but it's quite a cool day where I was today, so um, it doesn't need to be re-hardened. Now I do apologise for this camera angle, I probably should have turned it around a bit differently. There you go. So you can see that as you've sliced down, um, it creates that little nine, nine squares there. And so then just slicing up this cane into even pieces. And then when I'm popping it onto my base piece, um, which my base piece is rolled quite flat, uh, quite thin rather, um, I'm just going to rotate the pieces. Now I'm rotating while I'm cutting as well, just to stop um, the squishing and just to help keep it even. And because the patterns change throughout each of the um, strips that we'd put in, I'm just choosing the best way to lay it on um, so that the, that the colors are random and not in a particular pattern or anything. And it is important that when laying it out onto the base piece, you try and close, get it as close as you can to each other and to try not to have any gaps because when you roll it down flatter afterwards, it just makes it easier.
try to keep your pieces a consistent thickness. It can be a little bit hard, but the more you practice, the better you get at it. Um, I'm still practicing, so some of mine are still a little bit uneven. But just trying to match up the edges as close in thickness to each other as you can as well, that also helps. Just move the board down a bit so it's easier for you guys to see. Okay, I've just lifted it up there, which I probably shouldn't have done because it kind of moved the pieces. Um, but I was just making sure that it wasn't stuck to um, the tile. I'm just going to roll with a little bit of pressure now just to try and close those gaps. Sometimes it helps if you pop your piece on a baking piece of baking paper and that way it won't stick to the tile. And then you're able to freely move it without having to peel it up each time. If you do find that you've got gaps in your piece, you can just strategically place your cutters um, so that they miss the gaps. I've stopped rolling there because I don't want to roll too thin. Try and still keep it around a three millimeter thickness. So as you can see, there are a few little gaps there, but I'll try and work the cutters around so that they're not included in my piece. important when cutting the u-shapes to make sure that you put even pressure all over the cutter make sure that it cuts all the way through and I like to use the gaps to make studs this oval is a favorite of mine I use it for everything I usually do the stud cutting afterwards I'm not quite sure why I chose to do it at this point I think I had a plan in mind and with this irregular circle it should have a mirror image but um, I was just trying to find it then and I seem to have misplaced it. The good thing about this oval shape cutter is that if I only get an odd number of them, I just cut it in half and then it's like a little mini arch, which is great for studs. I like to cut on a tile as I find that the clay will help to stick onto the tile it's easier than to um, it's easier than getting stuck into the cutter but if it does get stuck in the cutter like it just did then I just give it a really gentle little push to get it out unfortunately I've got fingernails so that can sometimes mean a little dent in my clay so I try really really hard not to do that 
And as you see here, I didn't actually push down that cutter enough. So just a little trim with the knife just to um, trim away the excess. And once I've cut my shapes, I also like to just run my finger around the outside of them. Just to smooth off the edges means less sanding later that needs to be done. And there we go. So I'm quite happy with the way these ones turned out. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching the process.